This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Okay, good morning, Rabbi Yisai, Baruch Mabam, Shalom Aleichem. Welcome to the Koil al the Perka National Shir, Monday afternoon. Welcome everybody. We have a very amazing topic today. The topic is, when did the Torah begin? What is the first divine communication of Torah? Before this year, if you would have asked a thousand Jews on the street corner, what was God's first revelation of Torah to the Jewish people, I would assume that everyone would say, Anoichi Hashem Aleikacha Asher Sicha Me'eretz Mitzrayim. And perhaps, or certainly, rightfully so, we know that God gave the Torah to the Jewish people on Har Sinai, not before and not after. There was no other Torah before, there will never be another Torah after. It's one of the Yud Gimel Ikram of the Rambam, Animamim Be'amunu Shalema, Shatayra Zuloi Tehei Mochlafes, this Torah will never be exchanged, V'loi Tehei Torah Acheres Me'is Habari Yisbarach Shemai. And yet we encounter a wondrous thing in the beginning of this week's parasha. Ayikach Avram es Sarai Ishtai. Avram took his wife Sarah. Ves Lloyd ben Achiv. And Lloyd, the son of his brother. Ves kol rechu shama sharachashu. And all their possessions that they possessed. I've been bothered now for the last two days that the words asharachashu are really superfluous. Just say, Ves Lloyd ben Achiv. Ves kol rechu sham. Why do you have to say the, their possessions that they possessed? What else do you do with possessions other than possess them? And the souls that they made in Haran. They went out to go to the land of Canaan. Canaan. So, Avram Avinu took the people, the souls that he made in Haran. What does that mean, the souls that he made? How do you make a soul? Only God can make a soul. Says Targum Unklus, Udavar Avram. Avram took Yasara Yitse, Vyas Loit Barachui, Vyas Kal Kinyon Hoin Di Kinoi, Vyas Nafshosa, and the souls, the Shabidula Iraisa, that they subjugated to the Torah. They converted them. They were Meshabi them. They were. They subjugated them to the Torah. Interesting, what do you mean they subjugated them to the Torah? There is no Torah. The Torah wasn't given yet. Oh, they subjugated them to... To what? You can't be mishubed to something that doesn't exist. I know the Avais kept the Torah before it was given. That was an altruistic act. They did that of their own volition. They did that as a free will offering. But to be mishubed someone... To be Meshubad, Meshubad means you are responsible to, you are liable to, you are subjugated to. You can't be Meshubad to something that is Enoi Ba'olam. Apparently we see that to a, a degree there was a, a, a Raisa already. And this is even more clear, says Hagoyin Rabbi Yosef Engel. Today's shir comes from the Sefer Beis Ha'oitzar. Beis HaOitzar is one of the classic works of Hagoin, Rabbi Yosef Engel, the great Goin whose style of Torah is what, from the most captivating of all the various chidushim that are in extant, where he mixes together Gemara, Lamdus, Chasidus, Kabbalah, Machshava, Pilpal, into one seamless Entity, one seamless tapestry. My friend Reb Herschel Friedman is uh, reworking or the Svarma of Rabbi Yosef Engel. I believe he came out with a, a new edition of the Beis Ha'oitzar. Um, he asked me to mention if anybody wants to be Mishtatef in his uh, Machoin. But uh, they put out Chidushim of Rabbi Yosef Engel ala Torah. They put out the Beis Ha'oitzar. They put out Rabbi Yosef Engel on Sh- uh, Shavias. And this comes from the, the Sefer Beis HaOitzar. And Rabbi Yosef Engel says that if the, the Targum says Avram Avinu is Meshabed souls to the Torah, 
So apparently there was a, a certain existence of Torah at that time. The Torah existed. Furthermore, this is further seen in Avodah Zarah, Daftes, where the Gemara says the world will be around for 6,000 years, 2,000 years of emptiness, Shnei Alafim Torah, 2,000 years of Torah, Shnei Alafim Yemay Samashiach, 2,000 years of the coming of Mashiach. So that, that itself is an interesting concept. The Gemara says that the world exists for 6,000 years, 2,000 years of abysmal emptiness, and that's what we saw, the world uh, descended into darkness without belief in one God, you had the Dar HaMabal, the Dar HaFlaga, you had 2,000 years of Torah, and 2,000 years for the possibility of the coming of Mashiach, which the Gemara says we've already gone through a lot of that, and still the Mashiach has not come. It means this is the window for Mashiach to be able to come. Ask Rabbi Yosef Engel, wait a second, let's make a cheshben. What year was the Torah given? Torah was given in the year 2448. We know Avram Avinu was born in 1948 of the Jewish calendar. And the Torah was given exactly 500 years later in the year 2448. So how could the Gemara say 2,000 years of Torah? The Torah wasn't given in the year 2000. The Torah was given in the year 2448. Says Rabbi Yosef Engel, it must be the Torah began to be revealed even before the revelation at Sinai. The Torah began to be revealed with the S Hanefesh Asher Asu Becharan, with the souls that Avraham made in Charan, that he was Meshabi them to the Torah. Torah existed in some form to mankind, was revealed to mankind in the year 2000 approximately when Avram Avinu was 52 years old. And says Rabbi Yosef Engel, this only works out if you say that Avram Avinu already was extricated from the status of Ben Noyach before his Mila. Avram Avinu had a Mila 99, so he must have already been, had a Din Yisrael before the Mila, because otherwise you can't have Torah without Yisrael. And it must be when Avram was 52 years old and he started to be Megayar, and Meshavid people, Iraisa, that began the 2,000 years of Torah. Rabbi Yosef Engel says further, this must take the tzad of the Parshas Drachim, that the Avais HaKadoshim were Yatsu, Mechlal, Bnei Noyach, that they were no longer considered Bnei Noyach, but rather they were considered Yisrael. And this is the amazing bombshell revelation, Rabbi Yosef Engel, that Iraisa Torah begins with Avraham. And in that case, the first revelation of Torah, the first mitzvah in the Torah, is Vayoymer Hashem al Avraham, Lech Lecha, go, leave the Golos, go to Eretz Yisrael. That is the first divine communication of Torah. Got that? What's the first letter in the Torah? Lamed. Lech Lecha. Now, the uh, how do I even say this? It's very difficult for me to understand this. Because we know that in order for something to be Taira, you need the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was the greatest Navi. Avram Avinu was not as great as Moshe Rabbeinu in prophecy. What do we call somebody who says that Avram Avinu was as great as Moshe Rabbeinu in Nevoah? We call him a heretic. We call him an Apikairas. We know that only Moshe Rabbeinu, only his level of Aspaklari Hameira was able to make something into Torah. So how could we say that the Torah began to be revealed in the times of Avram? How could we say such a thing? How could we believe such a thing? This is what Rav Yosef Engel writes. And we're going to be working with this thesis today. Although I must say, this is very, it is very difficult. Says Rabbi Yosef Engel, this whole idea only works according to one shita in Shas. The Gemara Gitin Daf Samach brings the Machloikes. How was the Torah given? Was the Torah given piecemeal, Megillah Megillah Nitna? Or is the Torah given in one fell swoop, Torah Chasuma Nitna? 
Amar Rabbi Yochanan, number six. Mishum Rabbi Bina, Torah Megillah Megillah Nitna. The Torah was given. Megillah Megillah. Like it says, Azamarti Hine Basi B'Megillas Sefer Kosov Olai. Then I said, Here, behold, I have come. B'Megillas Sefer Kosov Olai. Because Rabbi Yochan of the Torah was given Megillah Megillah. Piecemeal, piecemeal. Reish Lakish says the Torah was given Chasuma Nitna, in one entity. Like it says, L'Koyach HaSefer HaTorah HaZois. I, what does Rabbi Yochanan do with the Pasuk that says the Torah was given and one fell swoop? Says the Gemara, Rabbi Yochanan would say, that's after all the Megillus were given, then you take the whole thing as one entity. And what does Reish Lakish do with the Pasuk that seems to indicate the Torah was given as a Megillah? Says the Gemara, Rabbi Yochanan, uh, Reish Lakish would say, yeah, the entirety of the Torah is called a Megillah. Says Rabbi Yosef Engel, this idea that the Torah began to be revealed in the times of Avraham only works out according to Shitas Rabbi Yochanan that the Torah was given piecemeal, piecemeal. So you could say it was given in piecemeal. First God told Avraham, go to Eretz Yisrael. Then God gave the Bnei Yaakov, the Mitzvah of Gid Hanosha. Then the Rebun Hashem, perhaps in Mitzrayim, gave us Matzah. And at Mara gave us Shabbos and Kibarav. But according to Reish Lakish, that the Torah was given in one fell swoop, this whole idea does not work out, that the Torah began to be revealed in the times of Avraham. No, the Torah is one entity, the Torah is one unit, emanating, says Rabbi Yosef Engel, from the absolute unity of the Creator, and therefore the Torah has to be given in one fell swoop as well. Says Rabbi Yosef Engel, something that is definitely fitting of this great guy. something Ru'uyin Lamisha Amrai, that the Machloikis Rabbi Yochanan Reish Lakish, whether the Torah was given, as Rabbi Yochanan says, Megillah Megillah Nitna, or the Torah was given in one fell swoop, Chasuma Nitna, is dependent on a different Machloikis Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish. And that is whether Chatsi Shir Asr Menatayra is half an amount usher from the Torah. We know you're not allowed to eat pig, right? A question. Are you allowed to eat pig, Midai Raisa? So, of course not. Not true. It's not true. According to Rabbi Yochanan, you're not allowed to eat pig. According to Rish Lakish, you're only not allowed to eat a kezayis of pig. Less than a kezayis, you're allowed to eat Midai Raisa. There's no such thing you're not allowed to eat pig, according to Reish Lakish. You're not allowed to eat a kezayis of pig. But chatsi shir mutter menat Torah. Of course, it's aser midra banan. The rabbis asserted it. But as we're going to see, according to the Mabit, in the times of Moshe and Yehoshua, there were no isure dra banan yet, the Mabit says. Which is also, by the way, a chedosh. Says Rabbi Yosef Engel, Rabbi Yochanan, who says, Torah Megillah Megillah Nitna, is forced to say Chatsi Shir as Asr Menat Torah. Reish Lakish, who holds the Torah is given as one entity, he can hold Chatsi Shir Mutter Menat Torah. And we'll explain. Toysvus and Kedushan, you ready? Put on your, uh, your seatbelt for this one. Fasten your, sho- fasten your seatbelts. Hold on to your socks. Here we go. Toysvus and Kedushan, Daflam and Ches. Brings the kasha the Yishalmi. The Yishalmi asks, when the Jews got into Eretz Yisrael, it says they couldn't eat matzah right away because it was an isra of chadash. You can't eat the new grain until you bring the carbon oimer. Frek toysvis, akasha. Why, don't, why couldn't they eat matzah? And utilize the principle of asei doichaloi sasei. There's a mitzvah sasei of eating matzah. There's a lav of eating chadash. So, question. Let the mitzvah of matzah push off the yisra of chadash. Got the question? Why did they not eat matzah when they entered the Holy Land? Why doesn't the mitzvah of matzah push off the yisra of chadash? Answers Toysus in the name of the Yushalmi, because the mitzvah of matzah is a mitzvah that preceded the Torah. It's what we call an asay de adibor. 
and Chodosh is a lav la'achar hadibor. And in asay de koidem hadibor doicha lav da'achar hadibor. Interesting. The mitzvah of matzah is a weak mitzvah because it's a mitzvah that preceded Sinai. And a mitzvah that precedes Sinai is not such a strong mitzvah. Ein asay de koidem hadibor doicha lav la'achar hadibor. Asab Yosef Engel. That only works out according to Reish Lakish that the Torah was given in one fell swoop. So the Torah was given in one fell swoop. So that means that after the Torah, w- that at Sinai, God had a re- review, give again the Mitzvah of Matzah. And whatever was given until then was what we call Kaidem Adibor. But according to Rabbi Yochanan, the Torah was revealed, Megillah, Megillah. And if the Torah was revealed, Megillah, Megillah, what do you mean, this is an Asay Koidem Hadibor? This is, when the, this is when the mitzvah of matzah was taught. It was taught in piecemeal. The whole Torah was given in piecemeal. There's no such thing as Koidem Hadibor and La'achar Hadibor. The whole answer of Toysus only works out like Reish Lakish, that the Torah was given in one fell swoop, so whatever was given early has a lesser status. But according to Rabbi Yochanan, that the Torah was given in piecemeal, so this is when this mitzvah was given. So why is it an assay the Kaidem Adibor? Says Rabbi Yosef Engel, Rabbi Yochanan will have to give the answer of the Shal Shetshuvah's Harim, a different reason why the assay of Matzah will not push off the love of Chadash, not because Ein Asay the Kaidem Adibor will push off the lav of the Achar Hadibor, but rather because how are you going to eat the Kezayis of Matzah? E Efshar Litzam same. There's no way to be exacting. There's no way to be Mitzam same. There's no way to exactly know how much Matzah you're eating. So, the mitzvah of matzah is a kezayis. The yisr is a kezayis. If I eat more than a kezayis, then I'm eating chadash without a mitzvah. If I eat less than a kezayis, I'm also eating... Now, so you say, but if I'm eating less than a kezayis, then I'm not doing the mitzvah. Yeah, but then you'll say, I also don't get the avera. No, Rabbi Yochanan would say, Chatzi shir asr mena that's how Rabbi Yochanan would answer the question. Rabbi Yochanan would answer the question, you know why they didn't eat matzah before, the t- before when they entered Eretz Yisrael? They didn't eat matzah because Rabbi Yochanan would be forced to say, Chatzi shir asr menatayra. And then we're afraid that if you don't eat a kezayis, so you don't get the mitzvah, and you're doing the avera of chadash. And if you eat more than a kezayis, so then whatever is more than a kezayis, you have an avera without getting a mitzvah on that amount that's more than a kezayis. So Rabbi Yochanan, who holds that Megillah Megillah Nitnu, and therefore Matzah is not considered a mitzvah given before the Torah, it was given when it was given, so Rabbi Yochanan will be forced to say, Chatz Yishir is Asr Menat Torah. Rabbi Yosef Engel draws us to another example where there will be a dispute about how we view um, the mitzvahs before the Torah was given. The Medrash says about the Torah, Davar Tziva Le'eleftar. It was commanded in the 1,000th generation. Davar Tziva Le'eleftar. Why? Because the world existed, nine, because the Torah existed 974 generations before the world was created. And the Torah was given in the 26th generation. Ten generations to Nayach, ten to Avraham, six to Moshe. Davar Tziva Le'eleftar. Tisha Meois V'shivin V'arba Doirois. My Taima, Davar Tziva Le'eleftar. That's the Torah. Rab Levi says the name of Shon Bar Nachman, 980. Why? Davar Tziva Le'elef Dar is Mila. 
It's given in the 980th generation. The Torah was given in the 980th generation. What exactly is this Machlaikas? What generation, when the Torah was given? It says Rabbi Yosef Engel, number 13, they argue when does the Torah start? If the Torah starts from Avram Avinu and the first mitzvah is Mila, or is the Torah begin at Sinai? They learn it out from the word Davar. Davar is um, a Lashon of Torah. So if the Torah was given to Abraham, so it was given, so to speak, in the uh, before Sinai. That's the Machloikis. Is the Torah given at Sinai or is the Torah given earlier? They, they're debating this idea of do we say divine Torah revelation began at Sinai or can we make the case that it first began to, at least to some extent, become revealed to none other than Abraham Avinu? And Rabbi Yosef Engel points to many places in Shas where it seems like it's a big debate whether from Avraham Avinu and on was already the age of Torah. So for example, if you look in the Gemara Moed Katan, the Gemara wants to know what is the source, what is the source that Avelos is seven days. So the Gemara Moed Katan Davchaf says that Rav Chia Bar Abba was sitting with Rav Ami and Rav Yitzchak on the couch of Rabbi Yitzchak ben Elazar. And they discussed, how do I know Avelos the seven days? It says, I will turn over your festivals into mourning. So if we're turning over a, a Yom Tif into mourning, Yom Tif is seven days, mourning would then be seven days. Why does the Gemara say they were sitting on the couch? Because the Gemara is teaching us an important lesson. What are couches for? Sometimes, People, they invite couples over to their house for Shabbos and they sit around the table and they talk nonsense, 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 nonsense and they waste the whole Shabbos and they think, look, well, look what a beautiful Shabbos I had. No, they desecrated the Shabbos. Shabbos was meant for, of course, for a beautiful Suda, for Zmirais, to be with friends even. But the Iker purpose of Shabbos is for study, for learning. And if they were sitting on a couch, you could be sure it was to learn Torah. They were not playing Monopoly. They were not playing Scrabble. That's a waste of a Shabbos. So the Gemara is telling us they were sitting on the couch. You know, the G'dayle Yisrael, Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, on Shabbos, he had, he had very short Shabbos meals. I think uh, his Shabbos meals were somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour. Of course, Shabbos, you want to rest, but you have to dedicate serious time for Limit Atayra. Anyway, the Gemara learns out the source that Avelos is seven days, is Hashem says, I'm going to turn over your festival to mourning. The Yushalmi Toysus says, ask, so then we should learn out eight days, because Yom Tif is eight days, and the Gemara says, no, Shemini says is a Yom Tif by itself. Ask Toysus, why don't we learn out Avelos the seven days from Yaakov Avinu? It says they eulogized their father and they made Avelos for seven days. It says Yushami, you can learn out from before the Torah was given. So what do we see from there? From there we see then Avram Avinu was not a Jew and the years of Torah did not begin yet. If the Yushalmi asks that let's learn out from Yaakov Avinu that Avelos is seven days, and the Yushalmi answers you can't learn out from before the Torah was given, that means the Yushalmi holds that the years of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov were not years of Torah. On the other hand, the Gemara in Yevamais on Daf Samach Dalid wants to learn out that if somebody is married for ten years without children, so the Gemara says, well, one should divorce his wife and give her a ksuba. Because maybe you won't be zochah to have children from her, only from someone else. And the Gemara says, well, support for this is at the end of ten years that Avraham was living in Canaan, so he took another wife. By the way, Bizman we don't necessarily do that. But the Gemara is learning out a halacha from 
Avram Avinu, what do you mean? That's before the Torah was given. So that Gemara seems to hold that no. That you could learn out from Avraham because Avraham perhaps was the first Jew and Lech Lecha was revelation of Torah. And Rabbi Yosef Engel said, well, maybe that's why the Gemara says it's not a complete Raya. Maybe that's why the Gemara says it's only Zecher Ladavar because Avraham Avinu maybe it was not years of Torah. Um, let's look in number 20. The Gemara learns out, how do I know you need to shecht a carbon oil with a knife? Says the Gemara, we learn it out from the Akedah. The Akedah was an oila, and Avram Avinu took a knife. So what do you mean, how could you learn out from there? Ain lemeidin, before the Torah was given. No, that's not considered before the Torah was given. Because Avram Avinu was already the first Jew. And... The revelation to Avraham of Lech Lecha was divine revelation, was Torah revelation. Here's another example. The Gemara Msachim Vavam and Aleph going on to Vavam and Beis discusses how much in advance of Yom Tif do we need to start studying the laws of Yom Tif? So the Gemara says that we expound on Hilchos Pesach before Pesach 30 days. That's the Shita of the Chachamim. And Rabbi Shem Gamliel says two weeks. Where do the Chachamim get it from? From Moshe Rabbeinu taught Klai Yisro on Pesach Rishon, Yedalad Nisan, about Pesach Sheni. And where does Rabbi Shem Gamliel get it from? Says the Gemara, Moshe Rabbeinu on Rosh Chodesh taught them about Pesach, so we see two weeks. So I asked the Pnei Yeshua, what do the Chachamim do with the Pasuk of Rav Shem Gamliel that Moshe taught them about Pesach two weeks before? Says the Pnei Yeshua, nah, that's not a proof. You can't bring any proof from there. That was before the Torah was given. And there was no Chiv at all to learn the Halacha. So you can't learn out from there. You can't learn out from before the Torah was given. So ask Rabbi Yosef Engel, and what does Rav Shem Gamliel hold? Why does Rav Shem Gamliel hold? You could learn out from before the Torah was given. Says Rabbi Yosef Engel, Rav Shem Gamliel holds, that's not called before the Torah was given. Before the Torah was given is before Avraham Avinu. But once Avraham Avinu came and Hashem told him, Lech Lecha, that was not just divine prophecy, that was Torah revelation. The Torah began to be revealed already in the times of Abraham. And by the way, Rabbi Yitzhak Engel uses this to explain a medrash regarding, they asked if bris milah is so chaviv, then why was it not written in the Ten Commandments? It's, uh, in the Ten Commandments we have, we talk about idolatry, and swearing in vain, and Shabbos, and honor your father and mother, and don't kill, and don't commit adultery, and don't steal. So why isn't Brismila there? So he's responded, no, why don't you look in the Torah? Before God gave the Torah, He gave Brismila, like it says, Bachoydesh Ashlishi, Ushmartem es Brisi zu Brismila. So before the Ten Commandments, he gave bris milah. Rabbi Kiva says, no, Shmartim is we see a Shabbos. So ask Rabbi Yosef Engel, according to Rabbi Akiva, that a Shmartim is we see a Shabbos, then you can ask the question of Agrifas. If Mila is so chashuv, then why wasn't it said in the Ten Commandments? Says Rabbi Yosef Engel, because Rabbi Akiva would say, it's perhaps even more fundamental than the Ten Commandments. Namely, it was said to Avraham Avinu. And that's revelation of Torah. That's divine Oiraisa revelation. So Marv Rabbi it comes out that according to this Chiddush of Rabbi Yosef Engel, which is based on a number of different premises, if we're going to say that the revelation to Avraham at age 52 was not only prophecy, but Torah revelation. Number one, we have to say that the Avais had a status of Yisrael before Brismila. 
Number two, we have to say, Torah, 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 Megillah, Megillah, Nitna, like Rabbi Yochanan. It was given piecemeal. We have to say, they, the Avais were not Bechlal B'nai Noyach. But if we take all of these premises, and we grant them, then it comes out, the first revelation of Torah was Vayoymer Hashem El Avram Lech Lecha. The first thing God told Abraham is get out of the Gullus and go to the land of Israel. That's the first message of the Torah. Go to Eretz Yisrael. Well, according to that, I think a few things become clearer. The very first Rashi in Chumash is bothered. This is a book of Torah. So it should begin with the first mitzvah given to the Jewish people. Why does it begin with Bereshis? Says Rashi, because Kayach Ma'asav Higid La'amoy Lo'seis Lohem Nachlas Goyim. That if the Gentiles say to the Jews, you're robbers, you conquered the land of the seven Goyim, we say back, it all, the land belongs to God, He gives it to whoever He chooses. So I was bothered. I understand it's very important that it should be clear that Eretz Yisrael belongs to us and if the Goyim want to challenge that we should be able to respond with a definitive answer that the world belongs to God and He gives it to whoever who He pleases. But why is that even more important than the first mitzvah in the Torah of HaChodesh Hazel Lochem? I understand it's important but why does it need to come first? But according to Rabbi Yosef Engel, we could suggest because the first mitzvah in the Torah is to go to Eretz Yisrael. The first divine communication is Lamed, Lech Lecha. So if that's the first mitzvah in the Torah, we need to be able to, they're going to tell us, what do you mean go to Eretz Yisrael? It doesn't belong to you. And the answer is going to be, what do you mean? It belongs to us. The world belongs to God. He gives it to whoever He wants. I mean, now we understand why Rashi is bothered now we understand the answer of Rashi. What's the answer? Rashi is bothered by Akasha. The Torah is a book of mitzvahs, so start with the first mitzvah. No, the answer is, we need to understand why Eretz Yisrael belongs to us. But why does that have to be first? Because that's the first mitzvah in the Torah. Go to Eretz Yisrael. And maybe this gives us deeper insight into why Light was jumping the gun and he was grazing his why his shepherds were grazing their sheep on Eretz Yisrael, and the shepherds of Avraham were reprimanding them, but this is stolen. And Lloyd said, look, the land was given to Abraham, and he has no inheritor. And Lloyd's the inheritor, this is not stolen. And the Torah says, look, uh, Avraham's shepherds were right. Why did Lloyd's shepherds jump the gun and take possession of Eretz Yisrael right away? I mean, could you blame them? This is the first divine revelation. And God tells those Avram, Lech Lecha, El Eretz He takes him to this land. And this is the first mitzvah in the Torah. And it's all based on the first Rashi and Chumash, Bereshis Bara like him. Kayach Masav Higid La'amoy Los Yislam Nachlas Goyim. Where God, where God tells us, tell the Goyim, the land belongs to me, I give it to whoever I want, I take it away from whoever I want. And that's... And then the Pasuk says again, V'haknani az ba'aretz. That they were conquering Eretz Yisrael from the descendants of shame. So God said, don't worry, I'm going to give it back to you. And Avraham made a Mizbeach. And he thanked Hashem that he's going to have children and that he's going to have Eretz Yisrael. So the shepherds of light see, the first thing God tells the Jewish people is go to Eretz Yisrael. It's all based on the fact that God created the world, He gives it to whoever He wants. And Avraham makes a Mizbeach thanking Hashem for the future gift of Eretz Yisrael. So could you b- blame the shepherds of light? They said, look, God did, gave you your first mitzvah to be in this land, so let's, let's do the mitzvah. Let's take possession of the land. 
And I want to share with you an amazing chiddush of the Oistravts, Rabbi Chil Halevi of Oistravts, in the Sefer, it's quoted in the Sefer, Drisha Tzion Ramosha Tzuriel. This is really a remarkable observation. He says, when you investigate... What was the first communication Hashem had with Avraham? Which, according to what we said, is the very first mitzvah in the Torah is Lech Lecha El Ha'aretz Asher Areka. What's the first thing God tells Yitzchak? He says, don't go down to Mitzrayim. Shechoin Ba'aretz, live here in the land of Israel. What's the first thing God tells Yaakov? Vihine Hashem Nitzavalav. And then he says, Ha'aretz Asher Tar Shoychevala, the land you're lying on, Lecha Etnena, Ulezaracha, Adoylam. I gave it to you? I'll return you, Vashivaisichal Adamazais. I won't forsake you. So the first thing God tells Avraham, go to Eretz Yisrael. First thing Hashem tells Yitzchak, don't you dare leave the land. Live in Eretz Yisrael. The first thing Hashem tells to Yaakov, the land you're lying on, it's yours. And I'm going to bring you back here. What's the first thing God tells Moshe? I've seen the affliction of my people and I'm going to come down to bring them to Eretz, Zavas, Chalav, Udvash. What's the first thing God tells Yehoshua? Moshe died. Go across the Yardin, and we're going to go to the land that I'm giving the Bnei Yisrael. What's the first thing Hashem tells David? Through God, David ran away to save his life from Shaul, so he figured he'll be safe in Moab, and they ratted him out. He was hiding by the family of Rus. He put his father and mother there. David left Eretz Yisrael. The first thing God told David is, get out of Eretz, get out of Chutzaretz, get back to Eretz Yisrael. And what happens? Shaul found out, and he runs after David, and he made his life miserable, and Moab killed his father and mother. The first divine communication to the greatest people who ever lived, Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Moshe, Yeshua, David, don't leave Eretz Yisrael, live in Eretz Yisrael. And according to what we're learning, it's the very first mitzvah in the Torah. Lech Lecha. And this explains why that's the first Rashi in Chumash. That why it's so important to understand who it so belongs to, that's the first mitzvah in the Torah, according to Rabbi Yosef Engel. Now I will admit, this is a very big chiddush, to say there was Torah communication, I don't even know how we're allowed to say that. We know that the only reason, the only thing that makes anything that was communicated to the Avais Torah is because Hashem then repeated it to Moshe. But somehow once Hashem repeated it to Moshe, somehow retroactively it like grandfathered in the communication from the time of Avraham when he was 52 years old, as the Gemara Navoid Zara says, 2,000 years were the years of Torah. So, we now, in this week, we begin this 2,000 year period through Avraham being Meshabed, these Geirim, to the Oiraisa. And um, this is the great Chiddush of Rabbi Yosef Engel. I want to wish everybody a wonderful day. Bracha v'hatzlacha. Call to everyone. Be well. Okay. Hey, Rabbi. Uh, okay. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.